So last Wednesday, I had a look at Home, A Story of Light, an upcoming point-and-click adventure game and the first one developed by UK-based Think Picture Studios. The three-man squad featuring Luke on illustration and animation, Tom, the in-house composer, and Ben on writing, sought to develop an adventure game in the same style they loved playing growing up. Taking inspirations from Discworld, Broken Sword, Machinarium, and also Studio Ghibli and classic Disney movies. What first caught my eye with this game and made me want to play the demo was the trailer. The combination of music, the detailed art style, and voiceover. Oh man, we're going to get more into that later. I also enjoyed this genre myself growing up, specifically the Police Quest games and the Hugo trilogy. Although I didn't know there were Discworld point and click games, I'll have to check those out on my own time. If you guys know of any other good ones, please let me know in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. Anyway, the game is set in a slightly alternative history northeastern Victorian England. You play as Grayson, a 12-year-old boy and son of the great British inventor Joseph Swan. For reasons unknown to him, Grayson was forced to move to the Yorkshire countryside with his aunt and uncle. After receiving a mysterious letter, Grayson sets off in search of answers. But he's not going alone. Grayson has an adorable and capable little mouse as a companion. As far as I know, the mouse isn't given a name, so we'll just call him Mr. Mouse. The demo itself is a vertical slice, and the scene we play through actually takes place somewhere in the middle of the story. We don't know how we appeared outside of the Geordie Lamp pub, we just know we have to get inside. The challenge is sneaking a 12-year-old inside of this pub by using our wits, our friendly Mr. Mouse, and whatever we can find on the streets that isn't nailed down that we can use. As far as the game's mechanics, there isn't really anything too unfamiliar amongst point-and-click adventure games, except maybe when you get to control Mr. Mouse. The game features two different methods of interacting with the world. A verb coin, which provides multiple interaction options where applicable, similar to Monkey Island, and context-specific interactions for single-use objects or items. Mr. Mouse extends Grayson's capabilities by allowing him to reach and interact with objects that Grayson can't, and is great for providing distractions when necessary. Now, I'm going to talk about the atmosphere for a bit. I'm not an artist, and I always feel strange talking about things like aesthetics, art style, and lighting, but it all felt natural to me. It didn't feel like there was anything that didn't belong or was out of place. Between the scenery, the minimalist piano, the character designs and animations, and the soothing voice of the narrator, performed by Dan Pye, I felt it succeeded in creating that cinematic experience that they were going for. Aside from some minor issues I had with the UI disappearing on me when the cursor went a little too far away from the verb coin, there was no point really that I ever felt like I was taken out of the experience. Before I move on, I do have to draw special attention to the voice acting in this demo. Three out of the four characters in the demo are voiced by Dan Pye. He plays the omniscient narrator, the bouncer, and the chef. I'm usually pretty good at picking out when the same actor is used for multiple characters, but I had absolutely no clue that this was the case until I saw the credits. Seriously, if you don't believe me, have a listen yourself. This guy's voice is pure butter. And there's nothing over here. Ah, uh, Newcastle. Somewhere in the bustling city was Grayson's home, nestled between the cobblestone pavements and the towering oil lamps. Grayson would get there, he was sure of it. Honestly, this guy, the guy who's doing the narration, I can listen to this man read a phone book. Yeah, hello, here, man. <laughs> What's it been like you doing all this time of need, eh? <laughs> Bless you. Oh, bloody hell. Reet, where you best gun yem. Oh. Sorry, you're not understanding me accent, like. Yeah, how's about this then? Go home. Rats! What if it was uh, rats all along? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I don't want to downplay the tavern owner either. Both actors contributed immensely to the atmosphere of this demo. While it is challenging to really get into a demo that most people are able to finish in under 30 minutes, I feel fairly confident that should the quality of art, music, writing, and voiceover be consistent throughout, that I'll have absolutely no difficulty with immersion in this game. Even when you try to do something that doesn't work or something that the game can't allow you to do, it doesn't really feel like you're doing something wrong. It just feels like it's one of the options that Grayson would be exploring in this narrative. It's really quite well done. 
mouse flared its nostrils, inhaling the rotten stench. Ah, a good vintage, it seemed to say. <laughs> I've also been assured that not every scene in the full game will be dreary and wet. I also have to mention the character design because I thought that was a job well done. I always felt like I understood the expression that each character had on their face and what it meant. And even without the voiceover, I feel like you could have made this a silent game and I still would have understood what was going on and how all of the characters felt about each other. Overall, it really contributes to that cinematic quality. Now, the game does not have an official release date, but I've been told by the developer that they are targeting for early 2026. As far as the system requirements for this game, it's not going to require anything too heavy. Most computers will be able to play this, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. There will be a Kickstarter for this game starting at the beginning of 2025, so if you want to be informed when that goes live, check the description. I'll have a link for it as well. In the meantime, you can check out the Steam page, wishlist it yourself if you're interested, or even play the demo and let me know what you think. If there's anything I missed, or if there's anything you disagree with me on, feel free to comment below. This is a new type of video for me, so actionable feedback would be greatly appreciated. I do have the full playthrough of the demo available on my second page, so I'll provide a link to that at the end of this video and also in the description too. If you enjoyed this type of video and you want to see more of these where I just do like a quick breakdown of a demo that I play, you can like, share, even subscribe if you want. Also, if you want to see me play these live, you can come join me on Twitch every Wednesday for Indie Game Demo Night where I play at least two different indie game demos and just go through them with a fine tooth comb. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching this far. I really do appreciate it. You have yourself a great day and go play some fun ass games. I'll catch you next time.